Hey there, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about Eloquent and what I find is the best way, the most powerful way to use Eloquent. If you've watched some of the videos, you might have noticed that every now and then, I reference something called aggregates, which is a concept from domain-driven design. I have a video about how to use that concept or how to leverage the benefits of that, even if you're not doing domain-driven design, within Active Record, which is what Eloquent implements. And I think that's the most productive way to use Eloquent nowadays, at least for me. That's how I like to use it. And in this video, I want to show you some problems or some limitations that I found on, on Eloquent, or not even Eloquent, but really Active Record's way of working and how I managed to go around that. So let's jump into the code real quick. Let me show you an example. Let me show you what I think the problem is. And let me also show you the solution. All right, so I have some sample code here that allows you to save an order and order lines, and uh, order lines also reference a product. Here's a very simple task, which is create a user. Um, we create two products. We send a post request saying we want to purchase two products. So we want to purchase two units of product one and one unit of product two. And then we just have some assertions to make sure we have the correct total for the order, that the uh, order line product is the correct product, and that we have the correct amount of order lines. Now, obviously, in real life, you're going to have much more complex scenarios. This is just to showcase this, this concept. If we go into the controller, pretty standard. We have order lines being created. Notice that those order lines are being created in memory. So we have those objects stored in memory. And then we are creating an order for the user. And we are actually storing this in the database. And after storing this, we're finally saving these order lines into the database and using the relationship to make sure they have the foreign key set. Pretty standard. Now, I want to treat this order class as the aggregate root for the order aggregate. So it is not complete if it doesn't have order lines. And order lines should not exist by themselves. With Active Record, you don't have the guarantee. You can always create order lines by themselves, and you can always create orders by themselves without order lines. So you cannot guarantee that consistency. For example, right now, if I were to remove this line, the tests are going to fail because we have an assertion checking on that. But the code is still running. It's not failing. That is one thing. Also, if I were to throw an exception right here, the test is going to fail because we are searching for things, but this record would still be created. To fix that, it's a pretty easy fix, and I imagine everyone's doing that. You can just wrap that within a transaction. So we can call the DB facade, call the transaction method, move this here, and then we would obviously have to add this to the closure. There we go. And uh, if we rerun this, it's still gonna work. If we throw an exception here, this is going, this transaction is going to be rollbacked, and then we wouldn't have the order record on the database. So, you know, that's fixable. That's not a big problem. So I want to show you a package I created called Laravel Persist. And it's pretty simple. What it does is it allows you to create, to build an object graph from scratch without saving anything to the database, and then call a single method that persists everything consistently and reverts if anything fails, dispatches events that you have stored in memory and all of that in one go. So again, this is a very simple example. We only have really two items. We have order lines and we have orders and we're just creating orders and then also order lines. But in real life, more often than not, you're going to have more complex object graphs. And what I would love to do here is to create something like, say, we want to create a new order and we want to do something like, you know, we have the items and then I would love to be able to just say order lines and then call order save. And I love for this to work. If we try this, you're going to notice this will not work due to the way how Eloquent works. We need to have created the related item first. So we need to have an order persisted to the database for this to work. The same goes with product. Sure, product already exists in this scenario, so this works fine. But if we were assigning a relationship for something that did not exist yet, we would have to create it first. Otherwise, we would reference something that did not exist, and Eloquent by default does not go deep into those relationships and creates the records for you. Furthermore, we cannot get into consistency. So what I'd love to do is something like this. I wanted to create an order with everything that relates to an order, so lines, um, the user ID, all of that, 
and just have it work. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to refactor this a little bit to encapsulate some behavior into methods, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've refactored this a little bit, and as you can see, we have a call, a method called start for user. So we just restart a new order, we just return an instance of order with the user ID field. And then we also have a method called add line, which takes a product and a quantity. And as you can see, this method just pushes a new record into this lines collection, which is our relationship. And then it updates the total for the order uh, by using the product price and the quantity. So we're storing everything in memory. We have not persisted anything by this point. And if we call save, what you might notice is let's run our test. It is going to fail. And it fails right here because the order does not have any order lines. If we go here and check the lines, you're going to notice it's empty. And the reason is save will not persist relationships in memory. It only persists the the record you're you know that you're calling it upon. So if you're calling it upon order, it is going to persist order. If you have order lines, you have to call it upon order lines. And that's why you have to use the relationship methods. What we could do here is something like, you know, we could do order lines. We have this in memory, uh, each save. If we run this, uh, the order D is going to be no, because since we're setting this as a relationship, we're not passing the order AT. You know, we could, we could fix this. We could do something like a bit of a hack, right? But the problem is by this point, we did not have an AT. So if you run this, it is still going to fail because when we call this method, we have not persisted order yet. And again, this is a very simple object graph. In real life, you would have more complex ones. So what persist does is I'm going to show you now. I'm going to go here and uh, I'm going to, let me move this upwards. And I am going to use the persist trait. I'm also to go, uh, going to go into order line and use the persist trait. Let's import this. And now instead of calling save, and let's jump this real quick so you guys can see what I'm talking about. See, we have an object, so we have our attributes, we have the total, we have the user ID, and we have our relation, which is lines, and we have two records within that relation. Um, you can see they have not been persisted yet, so they do not exist in the database, and order also does not exist on the database. Now, instead of calling save, I'm going to call persist, so persist, and let's rerun our tests. And as you can see, we now have records. So if I remove this dump and die and rerun this, it is passing. What Persist is doing behind the scenes is it is figuring out all of the relationships that exist within this model. And depending on the type of relationship, it might have to save the model you're calling the method into first or save the relationships first. If it is, for example, it belongs to you, it'll have to save the relationship first. If it is a has many, it'll have to save the model first and then their relationships. And Persist is all of that behind the scenes, so it is abstracted upon this method and you don't have to worry about it. So all you have to worry about really is building your object graph and save it in one go. It does all of that with the transaction, so you don't have to worry about failures. You won't have inconsistent state. And that's pretty much all it does. It just has some very nice features as well. For example, remember that we talked that an order shouldn't exist without order lines, it doesn't make sense. So if I were to remove this, the test is going to fail because we have assertions, but the code is running. However, with persist, I can go into our relationship and I can add an annotation. So I can say required relationship. And if I rerun this, you're going to see that it failed with an exception that the model is missing a required relationship. So the model order is missing the required relationship lines. And with this, you can enforce your aggregate to have all of its dependence. For example, an order shouldn't exist without an order line. So we want to have required relationship here to ensure that, um, that we have that, those order lines in place. So let's comment this and rerun our tasks and they're back to green. With persist, you can also do something cool, which is you can store events in memory. So let's say that every time that you add an order line, you want to, um, you want to publish an event. So in this case, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do this whenever an order line is added, but you can say something like record event and you can pass a order line added, which is an event I created. It doesn't say anything. So you can record this event and persist is not going to do anything with it now. 
it is going to store this in memory. And once persist is called, after everything has been persisted, it is going to dispatch those events. So you won't run into the problem of having an event being dispatched, something failing afterwards, and then you have inconsistency because an event was dispatched, but nothing was saved into the database. You can ensure that it is only going to happen after the transaction is committed. This is pretty much all that Persist does. I do think that Eloquence is very powerful. I love Eloquence, especially on the read side. But this is something that I found I was needing quite often on the right side. And I noticed that I was seeing some hacks to go around Active Records implementation to, um, to achieve that. And uh, I think just having that Persist method doing everything for you within a transaction, um, having that consistency made my life much, much easier. So let me know what you guys think about it. I'm going to leave a link for the package on the description. Feel free to comment, create issues, pull requests. If you find that the documentation is incomplete, uh, let me know and I'll try my best to make it uh, more accessible. I do think it is a very simple package, but I also think it gives Eloquent, it makes Eloquent much more powerful. It is a small thing, but being able to just save those full object graphs and being sure, being uh, being assured that consistency is going to be handled, that you can store events in memory and ensure, being, you know, knowing they're going to be dispatched afterwards. Um, I think those are very powerful features. And, you know, I'm biased because I created it, but I created it because I felt the need to, and I use it every day. And honestly, I really, really enjoy it. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.